Hey, what's up, guys? Ipe here, and we're coming to a brand new visual tutorial about how to create your own video tools. So today we're gonna finally speak about video clips, how to organize a track, how to find the right ideas and put the right energy to each part of the track, how to organize all your stuff, um, create some perfect lyrics, and yeah, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks for my Galantis video clips, how I made the background, what kind of fonts I use and why I did this and this and this to have that kind of energy once I play that clip live on stage. So what we are going to do today looks a bit like this. So we have this part with the lyrics, then we have another part here. It's pretty cool. With the plexus in the background. And then we have this epic strip. Actually, that's not the final version. The final version is on my Vimeo channel, but I don't know why I just opened this one, but it looks pretty close. So we are now in Ableton Live, and when I produce a VG clip, that's always the first thing that I do is made a basic edit of my audio track, so it fits perfectly with After Effects, and it's much, much more easier to build the animation around it. And then I put some claps like that, just some basic claps, to help me in After Effects to know exactly where all my different sequences start, where I have to place my effect, and it's more easier to keyframe the lyrics and everything. So um, here, for example, on that track, I made a small edit so I don't have the second breakdown. Uh, you have you have that part where it's singing and the second one and I just want to have one part where it's singing it goes crazy and then I mix in my next track so I just made an edit really basic like that I have this first part here and the last part here where I don't gonna put any animation because that's just made from the mixing so when I put when I mix my two tracks together I don't want to have any effect on that so this is just black and my track really start here, and so I'm gonna introduce it here. See, and it, it, it's more, it slowly introduces the atmosphere and the energy of the track, so I'm gonna introduce my visual and the colors and everything I want to give it here. Then I have a first part here with some vocals. Uh, yeah, like that. And you can hear the claps. That's all the different all the different element. Each track, each clap corresponds. So put a keyframe here, or start an effect, or a lyric, or something here. Uh, so that's for the first part of the vocal, second part, and third part of the vocal. So I have this first part, which is really cool. Where I'm going to introduce uh, the energy of the track, the, the and, and make some really nice looking animation, really slow to calm the people down because there was another track before in my live set. And then on that part where everybody, everywhere is singing, because this track is a huge hit, everybody's singing on that part, so I'm gonna really make the, the, the lyrics big on the screen, because at that point, people don't read the lyrics, they just sing in because they know the track, they love it, and they go crazy. And that's one main thing with lyrics, guys. Um, you don't have to produce and to write all the lyrics on screen. I mean, that's not made for people to sing, or maybe you want to do it like that, so you can do it, but my goal is always to make the people dance, so I don't want the people to sing too much, but on that kind of track where you know that everybody's gonna scream in like crazy because they, they, they love that track, it makes the energy tame times more intense when you have a perfect synchronization between the people, between the animation on the screen and the music. So here you can really hear with the clips, uh, yeah, with all the claps, how it's gonna help me to sync all my, uh, all, my, all my animation. So no real build up and then it just is crazy. And then on that kind of parts, uh, I always use loops, uh, really dynamic loops, and just push some dynamic loops so it, it follow the energy of the track, but 
I don't need to be too much precise to have too much detail in that kind of stuff because I just want the people to dance. So I'm just going to apply for that track uh, some effects here on the scenes. One, two, three here and then another one here. Two, three. Same thing. So we're going to have one loop, maybe apply some effects, some color changing and stuff on that. And then I just going to apply maybe some Kaleida to make that rotating a little bit more or maybe some invert strobing. So another thing is for the colors. Uh, I'm probably going to use some pink and some cyan or blue or some maybe some magenta in that track because it's a very cool and lovely atmosphere in that track. And I feel that pink and blue really bring that cool and in the same time, lovely atmosphere. So then once I am into After Effects, I just need to import all the different audio files. So here they are. So I just uh, export each channel separately and now I have all my stuff here. And then I just need to take uh, my main audio, make it a new comp, full HD. And so this is our main comp. So here we have our track. And as you can see, you see a little bit where are the different elements, but not so precise. So I'm going to import on the same comp my main clips. And now I know exactly where I have my different parts. Where So my clip is going to start here. And I'm going to fade in really slowly. And so I have my really first part here. So first part was for the first vocal. So I'm going to search the audio, it's vocal one clips, make it a new comp. And so here I know I have all the different stuff. So then I need to check out the perfect lyrics on the internet. Just search for Galantis Runaway Lyrics, somewhere on the internet, you have lots of websites where you can find them. And now we can start to make our own lyrics. The first text start here, exactly. So you can see with that clip, you are really, really precise. And just use our text tool and type sync, I can fly. Then I'm gonna make, oh, sorry. Then I'm gonna make, just make it start here. Duplicate, push it back here. So second one is the same, sync, I can fly. Third one is when I'm with you. So that's pretty fast. And now we need to stop because now we have to do all the design of that kind of stuff, change the select our phone, make some effects and everything. So once we have do that and we are pretty happy with it, we just need to really produce those text really fast and just copy paste all the animation. But you have to be really careful because uh, I'm going to show you the final one. So it's here. Oh, that's not the final one. That's the other way. I want to run away. But you're going to see here, you have lots of lots of layers. So that's just for one part. And if you have to make one small change, maybe on the color or the animation or something, you have to change it for all that different kind of stuff. And if you have to change maybe the, the fade in or the fade out, you have lots of changement to do. So take your time in the beginning, do it right. And then once you have your animation, you have your design and everything, just enter your text, copy paste it, place it at the right thing and you're done. So I gonna use, uh, as I said, uh, just push it white in the middle. I'm going to use this one to be sure it's right in the middle. Yeah, that's good. Um, then the other one, uh, we said we're going to use pink and blue. So let's add a ramp, graduate ramp, make it pink, something like that. And something more blue. Yeah, it's pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. And then um, we're going to change the font. So for all the people who was asking me what's the name of that font, so it's Jellica 
Jellica Wampia Street. This one. I think you can find it on that phone or somewhere on the internet for free. I don't use, uh, I'm not a big fan of phones, so I don't use too much different phones and stuff like that. So then the other thing is to see if it's right good. Oh yeah, so let's do it like that, sync. I can fly like that, push the fly down or maybe sync up. Yeah, that's looking good. And then um, always be careful about the center point here. So I always use the proportional grid, push it right in the middle. Then with this tool here, just push the center point here. That's the, the main point when you maybe make a, a scale in or something like that, it's scale from that point here. That's why it's important to really have it right in the middle. And then another trick guys, uh, when you do some stuff like that and you play in like me in some different clubs, different configuration, always push it in the middle and not too big. So maybe when you play on some smaller screens, your text is going to fill in. So always try to have this, this and some bars on the right and left uh, without text and too many important elements. So. We have our first design, looks pretty good, uh, like this. So I'm gonna fade it in a little bit. Oh no, I'm gonna use a typewriter. Uh, here, text typewriter. No, not this one. Uh, it's, yeah, it's in the presets typewriter here. Okay, and then just select it, push U on your keyboard. So you have the animation and maybe make it Introduce it over two seconds. What? Yeah, two seconds like that. So, and now once you have this, uh, yeah, it will be faster. Just do it. The other one, duplicate it, push it back where it has to start. Here, duplicate it. Same thing for the other one, and let's call this when I'm with you. Oh, and I forgot to make the fade out. So that's exactly what I speaked about. So now I have to make the same animation for every three. So just fade it out with the opacity or maybe 15 frames, something like that. Copy paste uh, somewhere, not here, somewhere here. like that and yeah when i'm with you that and center it is that centered actually yeah it should be okay maybe a little bit more like that so then go back into our main comp here here and just import that vocal one and make it start at the right point So you need to be really, really precise on that one. So it fits perfectly with the audio file. So it has to start exactly here. And now we can render it. So with the preview and see what's happened. Think I can fly. Think I can fly when I'm with you. So, so you, you, now you can see uh, the main animation is a bit too slow. So the type return needs to be maybe something like just one second. Just push it back here and here too. It's approximately, it changed because it depends of how long the text actually is. So make it something like one second, jump back in the main comp and see what's happened. Yeah, that's okay for me. So um, so now we have our text animation. So just duplicate, duplicate the layer, push the right text and push it at the right size. And we need to make uh, the main design around it. So um, I always use since now more than four years, the same background for everything. So 
jump back here, pre-compose all that stuff. Name it vocal01 animation. And now I'm gonna import, so I, I always use the same background because I worked a lot on it. So yeah, it's called clip background. That's my, my secret weapon. So uh, it's really basic. It's actually just made on black background. Oh no, a back. Yeah, it's a ramp. It's a bit blue. Then I have some small straws. Then I have a nebula made miss fractal noise. Then I have some straws a bit bigger and another nebula over it. So why I use that kind of stuff? That's first of all my Zyper and now my Visions signature. And yeah, it, it's really good because I always use black background when I play an LED screen, but when you show it on YouTube, on Vimeo, or even if you have to play on, uh, on some other stages where they have video projection or LED, LCD uh, TV, you need to have a small background to it. So that's pretty good because that's a black background. So your colors, your animation, your animation, everything stays pretty good. And in the same time, it looks great on any kind of screen. Uh, and I just change it and make it evolve over the four past years. And now I can use it on LED screen without it brings too much brightness to my room. So that's just perfect. And then sacred weapon number two is all the adjustment that comes over all that clips. So I just copy paste them all the time. Oh, they are in the wrong, wrong order. So first one is a blue flare. So uh, this moves sometimes. I think you noticed it if you follow my work. Uh, so this is just one flare, so it's here. That brings a bit more color over all that stuff. Then I have another one here. So that one stays in here. Like this, it's made with optical flare, just make them out. So you just have that kind of glow effect that makes it look like you have something that is uh, off the screen and that make it look like it's real space. So that make it look bigger and more interesting. Then I have some curves adjustment just to make, because when, when you add the flares, all the black areas are, are no more black. So you have to turn them back to black like that. I have some mojo effect over it. I love that one. That's just to, same thing, help them to go to black without losing the colorful and the glowing effects. Then I have some fast blur for the edges. That's something special. Uh, I, I don't use that all the time, really only when I want to have something like a magical atmosphere where it doesn't look too much precise. And over it some glow all the time. Just some basic glow in add mode with just a really low opacity. And this helps me just as I bring everything more down with the curves, this helps me to bring the colors more up. See the difference? My blacks stay black, but my colors are still have more life. And then I add an overall black mask just to make the edges a bit more black and to concentrate everything to the center area where everything's happening actually. So this is without the adjustment, this is with the adjustment. So now what you have to do is just to finish all the lyrics, all the text. Uh, I'm gonna really fast show you what I use for the second one. So that's my main project from my own clip. So I have vocal one here, yeah, vocal two is here. So for vocal, vocal two, I've just choose, I want to run away, I want to run away. And so this is made with a Kalinga font. Uh, some people ask me for the font. So Kalinga, same thing, gradient on the runaway and on the I wanna, it's something more pink. So. That's a cool trick when you want to, instead of just using one fixed color, you made a, a small gradient between two colors who are really looking the same, but they're just gonna give a bit more life to your text. So once we have uh, done our text and main design, we have to introduce the plexus. 
background effect to give a bit more life to our background. So create a new composition, name it Plexus Notes 01. Uh, 16 second length and now we're gonna work that like uh, a basic VG loop like we do all the time and then introduce it into our footage so create a new solid name it plexus 01 and this effect is from a company called Robite here and it's called plexus that's a pretty heavy and complex plugin but the final looks awesome so you can find lots of tutorials about how to use it I'm gonna really show you really fast how I've made the effect uh, for that clip so I'm gonna use a rectangle shape then add geometry pass so we should start to see our plexus here make it a bit more bigger um, 100 points, maybe 50, and then add some replication, maybe four. Uh, add a lines renderer, add a triangulation renderer, and some noise, effector noise. Push the noise up, and now we have that funny effect. So um, then go into your pass, make it pink. something like that and animate the noise effector let's go to noise detail evaluation rate evolution rate push it down maybe to five maybe to to really really because i want a really slow animation and noise evolution over 60 second make one rotation and it's still too fast okay um push the scale up no push the scale really down to 0 0.05 0 0.5 maybe yeah 0 0.05 oh stay at 0 0.1 as i said it's a really complex plugin so you always have to change everything uh, noise octave should be okay like that. Evolution maybe to 0 0.5. Ah, yeah, that's much more better. Okay, push it to 0 0.25. Ah, it looks better. So uh, after that, we're going to add some more lines. So more maximal distance. It's a bit more fade. Maybe 300 and make the fade a bit more round. Push the light thickness to maybe 1.5. Yeah, that's cool. I have no idea what I'm doing. Pretty much every time when I work on something, I have no idea what I am doing, guys. <laughs> Now that's just some fun. And for the triangulation, maybe a bit more true and then go make that lines look. Maybe just one was okay. And the triangulation push the opacity down to 25. We have something cool. Yeah, okay. Should be okay. I guess just gonna move our pass. A little bit more into it. Oh, it looks pretty cool. Um, maybe I think it's moving a bit too fast. Uh, oh, I know. We're gonna we're gonna just decrease uh, the time stretch it, or maybe not. Just decrease that noise evolution here, evolution rate to. 0.15 yeah that's good that's exactly what I want so now just duplicate it rotate it 180 and make this one blue more pink more cyan like that 
Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, now, what we need to do, uh, maybe let's see how it's gonna work with what we did before. So vocal animation zero one. Uh, no, it's this one. Okay, so sync and can fly, and import the plexus under the animation. Now uh, with the glow, yeah, we have to make maybe make it. I think we have a bit too much lines and triangulation and everything. Maybe if I push this one to 30, 40, 40 should look okay. And push it a bit more in. It's like when you work on that kind of stuff, it, it, you always have to change some small and detailed stuff. Yeah, it's, looks much more better. Okay, it's it's too heavy to to be previewed really fast, but that looks much more better. I'm really happy because this <laughs> it's a pretty heavy tutorial to do for me. Uh, I, I normally spend two or three days on that kind of project and show you in in less than one hour how I did it. Um, even for Plexus, I can spend one night just in doing that kind of Plexus to have it really look the way I want. But I'm pretty happy with that result. So, and then just to make it react on the music, uh, I jump back to Ableton and just gonna listen how it react to the music. Think I can fly. Think so I, I want it to react on that background piano you can hear and it's every four times, listen. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That means um, if I animate it at 120 BPM, here, I want this one for the first second. So push it to 100 and at two seconds, push it down. So you have four beats for this one and the other one gonna start here and stop at four. like this and then just uh, push it at zero here at the beginning and we're gonna loop that animation so here one loop if one one frame before this one has to be at zero and this one has to be at zero and at four it has to be exactly the same configuration as for the first one so we can add our looping expression that I'm gonna search here. So this one, loop out. Alt, click, paste, alt, click, paste. And here we have our animation. Oh, maybe I have one small, yeah. Just one frame before this one at zero. So, and then all we have to do is time stretch that plexus nodes to one, because it's actually at 120 BPM when you do it like that. That means one beat every 30, that two beats per second. So for to have four beats, I use two seconds. And then I just have to time stretch it and it's gonna fit perfectly to the music. So back into our first vocal Animation, Plexus Notes is here, just right click on it, time, stretch, and we have to push it to 15.09. That's normally uh, how to, to have it perfectly sync at 126 BPM. And just push it back. So, and at that point, you can start to make a first small render to be sure that everything works great. So, as you can see, um, the text is exactly synced on the vocal, the plexus is exactly synced 
on the piano. So that effect is just great and perfect. Uh, so for sure, it, you, you need to rework a bit the plexus and everything to, to have it really to look the way you want. But that was the main idea of that part. And so then it's exactly the same for the second part, where it's just another text with another phone and another animation for the plexus to follow exactly the, the piano. Now we are almost done with that project. Um, only thing we have to do is the FX, uh, the FX for the second part where everything goes crazy. And that's really, really easy, really, really easy and fast to do. Uh, I always do the f same thing. Um, I, I, I use a loop, a VG loop uh, from Visions. So that's from my next series that comes out in normally September. I'm actually working on it, but that loop is pretty much finished. Um, so what I did is just time stretch it to 50. So it's two times faster. So you really have the energy. Add a strobing over it. So that strobe is every on one beat, one beat, one beat. So that just with opacity and a looping expression. Then I have for the first part where you have that dun dun dun, I add with an adjustment layer, a CC Kaleida, so it makes it rotate, and an invert. Like that. Dun dun dun. Looks pretty good. Then back to normal and on the on the last one, I have just one, two, three, without any strobing. And that's my main loop. So then I import it into, right, I have too many things open. As I tell you, working on that kind of project, uh, even on one screen, is sometimes a bit hard because you have so much elements and different stuff. So I just place it here and then duplicate it three times and that was it. So guys, that was the main idea about how I build my VG clips and how I made the different effects in my runaway VG clip. You can see that project, uh, you can see the final project on my Vimeo channel. Uh, also go on vision.fair where you can find lots of other tips, tricks. You can download some loops to introduce into your own VG clips. And as every time, if you have any question, uh, don't hesitate, write me an email, write me a message, tweet me on Twitter or anything. Um, I'm always open and I try to answer to everybody. So my name is Zyper and see you next time for a brand new tutorial.